praise the Lord. Welcome to Growing Together Ministries from Williamston, North Carolina. I'm Pastor David Ray, and we're delighted that you've taken a few minutes out of your very busy schedule to join us on this great, great Sunday. And happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms and the moms that have gone on to glory. Hallelujah! The moms that have gone on to glory. Oh, what an experience and memories of mama. Hallelujah. But folks, as we trust and believe in God, we shall see them again. We shall see them again, and we shall rejoice with them again. But once again, to all you moms, happy Happy, happy Mother's Day. You are great moms. And we love you. And God loves you today. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. To the Lord in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you. For this Sunday. We thank you Father. That you're still on the throne. We thank you Father. That you are still. The God of all gods. You're king of all kings. We thank you Father. That you still. Hold our hand. Right now. We praise your holy name Father. We love you today. We love you today, Father. We thank you for Pastor Larry Lilly that is now back in the United States. We thank you for Pastor Larry Lilly. And Lord, I pray that you would fill his mind and spirit with words to speak to us today that would bring about a refreshment in our relationship with you, dear God. We need you today, dear God. Bless the message today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we just love you today, God. Forgive us of all our sins. May we draw close to the throne room on this Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Father, we feel your presence. We feel your presence. And we recognize your presence as we humbly stand before the throne. Oh, dear God, we thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit that is in this room right now in Williamston, North Carolina. And God, we praise your holy name. Lord, I can't move when I feel you're moving, I have to slow down. And I thank you, Lord. Lord, that you're going to touch hundreds and even thousands that will watch this message with Pastor Larry Lilly. God, you're preparing hearts now, Lord. And God, we thank you. We humbly Thank you for the safe arrival of Pastor Larry Lilly. 
Lord, just touch us today in a very special way. And we just praise you, Lord. We worship you today because we recognize your presence. Thank you, Father, for the ability to recognize your presence. Lord, anoint the speaker in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 With no further delay, I welcome back to Martin County and Williamston, North Carolina, our friend, a man of God, Pastor Larry Lilly. Hallelujah, brother. Come on. Come on. God bless you. First of all, this is my first service in America since March the 15th. And I have to stop, first of all and foremost, to thank my God and my Savior for opening the door for me to arrive back in America. Prophet Nahum Danzali and his wife Anita, his two sons, jo Joshua and Jerry, and his lovely daughter, Juliet. They took so wonderful care of me while I was in Nigeria. They treated me like a king. And I was originally scheduled to come home on April the 9th and arrive back in Raleigh on the 10th of April. But due to the coronavirus, it changed everything. And so we prayed and we prayed. People in Nigeria, people all over the world prayed for God to make a way. And do you know Friday was the last flight that the State Department out of the embassy was sending a flight back to America with American citizens. Had I not been able to get on that flight, God only knows how much longer I would have to remain there. But it's, it's a matter of God's timing and God's purpose. And so I just thank the Him, most of all, first and foremost, of what He did. And then I thank everyone else, my family and friends, that in constant prayer all over the world for this to transpire and take place. Amen. And I'm just thankful for God, but I want to pray. Father, I want to pray for everyone that's watching this video, everyone that has prayed, not only for my safe return, but everyone. Lord, I know the plane out of Abuja, Nigeria, Friday, was over 300 people, Americans. And many of those American citizens were nationalized citizens. They were born in and raised in Nigeria, but came to America and became a national citizen of America. So they were just as still American citizens just like I am. And Father, on Wednesday, you prepared another aircraft out of Lagos, Nigeria, and about the same amount of people flew from that state. Lagos, Nigeria, back to America. And we're so thankful for what you have done, O oh Father. And God, we just pray for this word today as we break this word to the people of God and also to myself. The message I have today is not to bash anyone. It's not to beat anybody over their head. But it's to get you to examine your heart. Does it make any difference if you've been saved 50 plus years or one year or one day? Because I, we need to examine ourselves. God birthed this message in my heart in Nigeria. I didn't know when I would preach it. I didn't know when I would share this, 
But yesterday when Pastor David Ray asked me to speak to the people today, God said this was the message I needed to share today. I thank God for the <coughs> almost two months that I spent in Nigeria. And I thank God for the people I met all over, especially the state of Tabara State, south of Labuja, seven-hour drive south of Abuja. I thank God for all the ministers and bishops and pastors and lay people that I met in all the different churches I was able to visit. But even my first service in Nigeria, I did not preach until March the 21st. Hallelujah, I, had, I got the opportunity to share the Word of God on my birthday. My 70th birthday, I celebrated Amen. in Nigeria on March the 21st. But before the service that night, the prophet says that we have to take, uh, I, I can't remember if it was two or three vehicles, and we had to drive about 30 to 45 miles to another city. And so we traveled this road to the other city. I said, what in the world? In my, 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 going through my mind, I didn't mind doing the traveling. But we went to an individual in his 70s that was retired. And he was a trustee through the ministry that Prophet Nahum does in Nigeria. And when we arrived, the gentleman so graciously greeted us and bowed, as the Nigerians do, welcome. And he invited me into the house. And so we went into the house and sat down on the sofa, and he was talking to us. And I didn't know what was going on, and then I want to say that uh, eventually the gentleman got up and went to another room and came out with a gown on which is customary for those in high position to wear a, a certain outfit. And then they led us outside under some trees in the shade. you got to realize it was 100 degrees in Nigeria most every day. And so we were sitting out there in that tree, but it was about 30 people that had gathered to celebrate my birthday. Amen. It was awesome of what God did. I was humble, I, I was crying that they would go to this extreme and that busy crusade, they would take this time out to do this for me. They had baked a cake, it looked like a Bible, that was trimmed in gold, and it was, I don't remember the exact wording on it, but it had uh, something, uh, Pastor Larry, your 70th birthday. Then they had food. They had rice and fish and salad and, and, and drink. And they had non-alcoholic grape juice. We celebrated. They poured the grape juice in the glasses and we toasted. They celebrated. People that had never met me before celebrated Amen. my birthday. Amen. And so that night, the first night started, we got there on Thursday. Saturday was my birthday. But as I was sitting in the service that night, let me share it with this. Uh, getting a little ahead of myself, but let me share this with me. We're sitting outside. They got a platform built for the minister to go up on stage to minister. We were sitting in chairs on the ground. There was close to a thousand people present. These people in that heat was worshiping God with everything that was in them with sweat running down their faces. They did not hold back anything. They were worshiping God with all the strength and being that was in them. Amen. They didn't care about being in dirt. They didn't care about being outside in the heat. They didn't care about possibly getting bitten by mosquitoes. 
They were worshiping God. They were having their relationship with Jesus. They were crying out to the Messiah. And this will lead to my scriptures today. Because we in America, including myself, because of the great country of America, pardon, pardon what I'm saying, but we're spoiled brats. Yes, yes. We have constant, as the prophet would say, permanent electricity. I want you to know that my t almost two months of staying in Nigeria, the electricity stayed off more than it stayed on. But this did not affect the, the, the lifestyle of the people. This did not prevent the people from going to church to worship God. They did not use an excuse, well, it's too hot or it's too cold or we don't have air conditioning or we don't have a, a carpet or we don't have cushioned pews or we don't have a beautiful building. Let me tell you something. There are beautiful buildings in, in Nigeria. I went in one church in Abuja the day after I arrived in Nigeria. This church has three services on Sunday morning. A hundred thousand people every service. Amen. It's, it's air conditioned. It's big. So I'm, don't, don't, don't take me wrong about Nigeria. But there, like even America, there's many places that are poor. But this does prevent them from worshiping their, their true and living God. Amen. Uh, there was one church, huge church. Uh, this was a great man of God that a pastor. He built a church close to the prophet's house. And this church, it's a beautiful church. In fact, I went to a funeral at that church. They, they have windows, they close, but during the day they open the windows up for the air. They had fans, they had a concrete floor, and so it was a beautiful church. But this pastor got promoted and went to another city, probably 30 to 45 minutes away. And that's where the Lights Crusade was held, and the church was huge. But when he went there, the building was there. And they had, they had windows, as you can see behind me, but no glass in the windows. They were open. And they worshipped, I don't know how many years in that church, a ground floor, no, no carpet, no cement, no wood, just a dirt floor. Homemade pews, but no roof. They worship, even when it rained and thunder and lightning, they will still, Brother David, worship God with Amen. all that was in them. Amen. Fortunately, Amen. during the crusade, there was no rain. But some years ago, the, the pastor was able to put a metal roof on the building so the rain could not come in. So I've said a lot to give you some scriptures that we, especially in America, but all around the world as well. And I titled this message, Consider Your Ways, or Consider My Ways. And this will be out of the book of Haggai, chapter 1. Haggai, chapter 1. Amen. Haggai 1, verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet said, here's the question. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Chapter 2, verse 3. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory. And how do ye see now? For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, 
And I will shake the nations, all nations. And the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Consider your ways. Now we know this scripture in Haggai was talking about a building where the people would come worship. And we see here that he talked about you dwell in your whatever homes and they had it in that day. They had the best homes that money could buy. But at the same time, they were allowing the house of God lay in waste. It was in disarray. And God came and spoke to Haggai the prophet saying, It's time to consider your ways. And as God began to speak this word of God to me in Nigeria, we got to understand the temple of the Holy Ghost is us. Amen. Not the building you worship in. Thank God for the building. Thank God for the conveniences that America offers in our nice churches of air conditioning in the summer and heat in the winter. Thank God for the nice chairs or pews that we have to sit on. Amen. Thank God that we don't have, have our electricity turned off uh, six days out of the week because of the, uh, the electrical issues. Thank God we got paved highways. Amen. Uh, most highways in our Nigeria are, are dirt. The main highways are paved. But thank God that we have all this. But I'm talking about your soul and my soul. You, yes. Especially you that are saved today. God is saying to us, consider your ways. We've got so caught up in, in the luxuries of America especially. We've got caught, caught so much in, in these things that's going on in America. We go through the formality of worshiping. We go through the formality of going to church. Yes. We go yes. through the process of doing this. Uh, but yet... God is saying to us, we need to consider our ways. Remember the day that God saved you. You gave your whole being to heart, to, to God. You prayed your way through to salvation, whether it was in a church or whether it was your, in your home or whether it was in a street. You surrendered everything to Almighty God. And God is saying that you need to consider your ways. You, you need to look in your heart. I need God, God allowed me, to, while in Nigeria, to consider my ways. God allowed me, amen. I said, God, forgive me of my wrong. Forgive me of being so uh, big-headed, a bull-headed, if you will. Because I remember it, God took me back. In 1967, when I got saved in a little country church out of Jamesville, North Carolina. And I remember that night, I, 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 when, when I prayed through the salvation, how I put everything in my worship that night. I didn't care who was looking. I didn't care what people may have thought. Amen. Amen. I was worshiping my God. And we get so self-conscious when we go to the house of God and when we can get back in the house of God in America. Amen. We won't raise our hands because we're afraid sister so-and-so would say something. Or we won't uh, cry out to God, amen, or we won't let the tears flow from our eyes because we're so self-conscious of what's going on around yes. us, amen. Yes. But God is saying, amen, uh, to consider our ways, uh, and if, if we'll do that, he says in the chapter 2 that I read here, amen, he'll make this house, amen, talking about our soul, not the building you worship in, amen, whether it's a, uh, the Campton Inn or the Holiday Inn or a church building or your home, amen. He, he says if you consider your ways, amen, and build your house, I'm talking about our souls, our hearts, amen, let God build it back, like it, like it was when you got saved, amen. He will make the latter house bigger than the, what the former house was. Hallelujah. So, amen. I could go on and on and on, amen. But God is saying this, this message, we need to consider our ways. We need to get back in the house of God, amen. Whether it's drive-in church or whether it's uh, 
live streaming through Facebook or, or whatever we get, whatever way we worship, we need to put everything yes, we have come on, come back on. into God and be thankful. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you something. I've been married over 20 years. I love my wife dearly. And I've told her off and on that I love her. But I want you to know in the last two months, I've told her that I love her more than I have for 20 some years. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. Come on. Because this experience has taught me so much. But even though I love my wife and she loves me and all my family and friends, God loves us more. And because we haven't considered our ways, I can see tears running from the eyes of Almighty gosh. Amen. Yes. And God is saying through this word today, friends, as I turn it back to Pastor David Ray, consider our ways. Consider your ways. Don't look at the building that you worship in. Be thankful. Thank God for the building that we have and what we have. No matter how beautiful or how many millions of dollars it took to build that building, that's awesome. God is not concerned about that building. He's concerned about this. Amen. Our souls and our hearts. I thank you for listening to this message today. Pastor David Ray. Amen. 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 Father, we surrender to your will for our lives to consider our ways today as Pastor Larry Lilly has presented to our ears that we could receive this. Father, I Consider my personal ways today, Lord, where I have been selfish. God, forgive me. Forgive me. Lord, for the things we take for granted here in America, forgive us, O oh God, we are spoiled brats. Brats! And we got to have this and that and everything. But oh dear God, I've learned in the last two months through the virus here and all over the world and what Pastor Larry Lilly has experienced firsthand. We need to get back to you, Father. We've wandered too much into this world. We've wandered too much into the things and comfort of this world. Oh, dear God, may we consider our ways on this Sunday, on this Mother's Day. Oh, Father, we need you. We need you, Father. We need you. If ever it was the time, we need you right now. Father, help us. Help us to love the unloving. Help us to love those that have made us mad. That we would get back to praying daily and reading the word of God daily. And that the Bible would be the central focus of every individual in the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We praise your name today. We thank you for the Lily family. And we thank you for this man of God that you brought back safely. We thank you today, Father, for Prophet Nahum. We thank you for the ministry in Nigeria. 
and the work you have called him to do. Lord, may you bless him that the city of David would be completed in a timely manner to help the Nigerians. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Dear brothers and sisters, it has been an honor. It has been an honor to talk to God today. It's been an honor to hear Pastor Larry Lilly speak. It's been an honor that we could gather one more time, one more Sunday, one more day, hallelujah. <laughs> One more time before you, God. This ministry, we love you all. Even those of you that have stopped loving this old country preacher, we still love you. But you must be led by the Spirit. You cannot be led by man or woman. Uh, you've got to be moved by God. The problem is we get moved by people too much. Uh, and we need to be moved by God. Uh, if we're moved by God, uh, we'll walk in the right direction. Uh, we'll do what we ought to do. We'll be able to lay our head on the pillow at night and sleep good uh, and wake up uh, with a smile on our face because we have loved God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got to stop. It's Pastor Larry Lilly's message today. Consider our ways. Don't forget those of you that are in the Martin County area and I talked with the management at the Hampton Inn yesterday. We plan to be back at the Hampton Inn on the 24th of this month, two weeks from today at 10.30 a.m. We'll be back at the Hampton Inn. Right now, with the situation of Phase 1 here in North Carolina, only 10 people being able to worship, that would not accommodate us. We'd have to leave people out. So we're waiting to the 24th where we can all can meet and no one would be left out. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We love you all today. And as I always say my, about my wife, Pastor Lisa Ray, she's out there taking care of patients. I love you, honey. Happy Mother's Day to you. And thank you for putting up with me because I'm something to put up with. <laughs> Glory! Because she knows it. But her wisdom, and she gave me some wisdom this morning from God. I appreciate and I love her. I love her more than I appreciate her. And I love all of you. May this Mother's Day be a day that you never forget. Never forget this Mother's Day. And as we close, I want Pastor Larry Lilly to come back and give us a closing prayer. I respect him highly. And I love him dearly and his family. Pastor Larry, come on up. Close us in prayer and then we'll go off the air. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for everyone that's listening to this program today. And God, I pray that everyone that heard this message today or go back later and replay the yes, video they will. will consider your ways. Consider what you have not been doing for God. Consider the times that you've held back in your worship. 
Consider the times that you refuse to give an offering or your tithe. Consider the times that you refuse to take a friend to church with you. Yes. God, help us to consider our ways going forward from this day. And God, we just give you the praise and we want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And God, as I was praying for the especially, especially for the last <coughs> several weeks, I says, God, your word says that you would give us the desires of our heart. And when I talked to my wife over two weeks ago, I says, God, I told her, I said, without God, it will not happen. But if God does a miracle, I'll be home before Mother's Day. Glory. And God, you allowed me to arrive at my house. Hallelujah. At 3.30 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Amen. The miracle transpired because over three weeks ago, the State Department said there are no more flights scheduled to America. But on April the 22nd, glory, glory. I received an email from <laughs> the State Department out of Abuja, Nigeria, that they were going to do one more flight to America. Glory, glory. And God, you so graciously, this past Monday, Allow that telephone call to come through from the State Department. Yes. Says, yes. I was on the flight. Hallelujah. Amen. So, God, you're hearing the people today. Yes. Amen. Don't give up. Right. Don't give up. Right. Amen. God will answer your prayer. Amen. Amen. You've got to hold on and believe it. Glory. I don't care how troubled oh, the on. waters are. I don't care how fierce the storm is. You've got to hold on. And God will show up. Amen. In Jesus' amen. name. Amen. 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 Have a great, great week. Don't forget, we'll be back Tuesday night at 7 p.m. with my wife, Lisa. Woo! Glory to God. In the book of Ephesians for Bible study, and then we'll be back live again next Sunday at 12 noon, and then the 24th, the 24th of this month, we will be at the Hampton Inn preaching the Word of God at 10.30 a.m. For Pastor Larry Lilly, Pastor Lisa Ray, and myself, and all of the people of the Growing Together Ministry Church of Williamston, North Carolina. Have a great, great Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you.